It turns out we finally got some leaked uh, graphics benchmarks for upcoming desktop Ryzen 7 4700G APU. It's been tested in 3D Mark V Strike and in terms of graphics performance, it actually seems like it will be powerful enough to run games pretty damn well. And in today's video, we're gonna talk graphics performance and gaming performance for upcoming Ryzen 4700G. There is just one but. AMD just announced that these APUs will be exclusive for OEMs, meaning that you will only be able to find them in a pre-built PC and this is such a bummer guys I gotta be honest here I was quite honestly excited to build a gaming PC with one of these yeah that won't be happening it should be said guys you will be able to pick up a pre-built gaming PC ship and you can get one of these but yeah in case you rather build a cheap gaming PC yourself yeah I do have some good news as well more on this in a second in case you're a bit out of it upcoming desktop fourth gen Ryzen APUs make use of the same ship that was introduced on laptops, the top flagship is an 8 core and 16 thread ship with a GPU unit marked Vega and so although this isn't RDNA or AMD's most recent gaming architecture, it has still proven to run games pretty darn well nonetheless. Now just recently the top flagship was tested in 3D Mark V Strike, the leak is coming from ship hell and it is really important to understand that as we look at these numbers guys, the APU being tested is an engineering sample meaning that the said processor is clocked a bit lower than the final retail one and looking at the specs super quick the 4700G is said to have a 3.6 base and a 4.45 boost clock and a GPU clock of 2.1 but the tested one only ran a 3 GHz base and 4 GHz boost clock with a GPU clock of just 1.7 GHz. Now to fix that the leaker overclocked the GPU to 2.1 and the CPU was pushed to 4.15 GHz hertz across all eight cores. With that said, let's look at the benchmarks and let's start with the graphics performance first, shall we? The onboard Vega 8 unit managed to score 5100 points in 3D Mark V Strike performance and 2700 points in Five Strike Extreme with a GPU clock speed of 2.1 GHz. But again guys, this is based off of an engineering sample so we expect the performance to be much greater once we see, you know, final retail. Anyway, in comparison, this engineering sample 4700G outscores both a Radeon RX 460 and a Radeon RX 550 and it's almost on par with a GTX 950. This basically means that this tiny ass APU with its aging Vega type graphics part can deliver graphics performance in class with graphics cards for around $100. Apart from the gaming benchmarks, the CPU doesn't seem to be that disappointing either. And in Cinebench R15, the APU scored 2079 points in multi-core tests, while in Cinebench R20, the APU scored 4789 points in multi-core tests, which is on par with a Ryzen 7 3800X. We know that upcoming 4700G will beat both the Core i9 9900K as well as the Core i7 10700K in both single and multi-core performance. We already seen evidence how close the engineering sample already is the Core i9 9900KF. And so with all that in mind, I think it's safe to say that the upcoming 4th gen Ryzen APU flagship will perform fantastic in games where high IPC and single core performance have proven time and time again to be an important metric for high FPS. And if all of that wasn't enough guys, we also seen some pretty good evidence that this APU seems to overclock pretty good as well. For example, the engineering sample had a 3 GHz base clock and a 4 GHz boost clock, but the leaker was able to achieve a 4.3 GHz overclock across all cores, which is pretty impressive knowing how poorly the shiplet design handles overclocking. Anyway, the system used was an Aorus B550 iPro AX motherboard and two 8 GB RAM sticks with a brand that wasn't revealed clocked at 4300. And so, in other words, guys, I think it's safe to say that high-end RAMs were used here and this is important to have in mind guys because of how these APUs are designed. They use some of the RAM as video memory and so basically this means that you know the faster clocked RAM you have it will give you more FPS and a better gaming experience. Now as for cooling for the overclocked system, a 240mm IO liquid cooler plus a Noctua D15 were used here so pretty high-end stuff no doubt here and with
this 4.3 GHz overclock, the APU never went higher than 76 Celsius. Now, as for pricing, guys, we believe that the top flagship will be selling for almost $300. Actually, come to think about it, the price doesn't really matter, knowing that the entire 40 and APU lineup won't be sold to the market rather than pre built PC, which is a huge bummer. And this came right out of the blue. That was a leak presented about a week ago suggesting OEMs would be a priority, but there hasn't been any info about 40 and APUs would be exclusive to OEMs only. That being said, the hope isn't over if you are as excited as I was for these because AMD promised in the 40 and APU announcement that they are planning APUs compatible with 400 and 500 series chipsets quite soon. We will hear a lot more about it in the near future. I am pretty confident that they are talking about Ryzen 5000, codenamed CSAN, and in case you're interested in what these are all about, yes, I got a video linked up down below that explains everything you want to know. Anyway, kind of a bummer here, guys. Nonetheless, I might be getting a pre-built PC just to test uh, these <laughs> APUs out. But if you're looking for a very cheap entry to the PC gaming world, one of these APUs can definitely be an option. But yeah, in terms of availability, these APUs will be shipped out to companies such as Dell, HP, Lenovo, etc. in August, and you should be able to pick up a pre-built PC with a 40 APU pretty much right after that, which begs the question, would you ever pick up a pre-built gaming PC if it was cheap? Yeah, let me know in the comments below.